hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss top. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walked Say, on. man, it's crazy because I, this other name is to mess me up, <laughs> man. The first time. You know what I'm saying? I know. Are you Jamaica thick? That is correct. What Where the you get hell? Where you get that name I'm from now? I got Miss Jamaica right here. I want to know, how did you get that name? Um, The name was given to me when I started uh, BBW Entertainment. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm real heavy on uh, Rastafarian, you know, art and Bob Marley. I'm real big on it. So, okay. Um, when I first came in, he saw the dreads, he saw... The roster colors and everything. He was like, "Man, I already know what your name is. We ain't even got to talk no more." Jamaica he like, didn't give me a chance to audition or none. I ain't had to do nothing. He was just like, "I know you're gonna be fired. Just go ahead. That's your name. Go on, on. make a name for yourself." And, and you loved it. I loved it. That was it. <laughs> that was it for me. That was it for me. So, how long now that's been your name? Man, it's been. Uh, Probably like maybe eight years now. Mm. Jamaica thick, right thick okay. going down. That's the name. Man. <clears throat> so, Makita Cookies? Oh, yeah. So, a family business. that's a family business. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you know how we always do, man. We yes. always talk about because we know how long that family, uh, that, that business been in you guys' family? Uh, it's Since been uh, 22 years. It'll be 23 years this year. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go back and then we'll go up, huh? Yes, but we want to know a little bit about you, not only just about the business as well. So tell us about how was it growing up in um, in a household with entrepreneurs, because your mom and dad are entrepreneurs. How was it as you being a child growing up in that atmosphere? Well, it didn't it didn't really start off like that. You know, I'm 38 years old. So, okay. um, you know, my mom was a hardworking woman. You know, they were both, matter of fact, my dad, they're both in the medical field, actually. Oh, that's what they were doing before? They're, that's what they were doing okay. before. And, um, you know, Makita just came, you know, with my great-grandmother. She was the uh, uh, one of the uh, cooks in the, the city, Memphis City School System. So that's how we got the recipe, and my dad went with it. But um, growing up, you know, it was mainly my mom working hard, my dad working hard, me going to school, just make sure my grades were good. We didn't really get Makita's until I was like 14, 15 years old. So. What inspired them to do that? Um, actually, um, Makita, actually, that was my cousin. She mm -hmm. died of leukemia when she was six, you know. So my parents decided to open up a business in her honor, you know, and we already had the recipe and no one, no one else had that recipe. You know, everything changed, you know, throughout the school system, you know. So when they found it, you know, when my great grandmother, you know, passed it on, it was just like, man, we need to do these because no one else is doing them. You See, know? I always hear about people, especially not hear about it, but you don't even watch movies and yeah. you hear that this recipe was passed down from generation to generation, but I've never actually met somebody who has said that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. She worked really hard in the school system. So, I mean, man, it's it's been it's been an experience, you know, dealing yeah. with a lot of, you know, a lot of strong, you know, wielded women in my family, like a lot of powerful women you know, from generation to generation, you know. So to be able to be the one to carry that name and to carry that legacy, it means everything to me. I'm completely blessed. How many siblings do you have? I actually just have uh, two other siblings. I have an older sister, mm -hmm. Tamika. Shout out to my sister, Tamika. And uh, I have a younger brother. Um, so he's the only boy. He's the only How boy. How old is he? Man, that's the prince of the kids, <laughs> man. He, he owns the throne. I just want everybody to know. How everybody. old is he? He's 26. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, 26, yeah, yeah. and he has three beautiful kids. I love him so much. He's all the only girls. one with kids. You know? All girls. It's one girl and two boys. Oh, okay. I just, yeah. I just thought that all these girls coming out in your generation. <laughs> um, Facts. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah. when that, so yeah, 15, you remember when the business first started off? Did you, mm -hmm. cause I, we've been here for 15 years and, mm -hmm. and our kids, you know, they grew up in this store. Um, 
shout out to my son. He's somewhere in here, but he didn't uh, really, you know, these kids, they didn't want to participate. I forced it up on them. I gave it to them. I injected this, this, this whole culture onto them of working, having your own mm-hmm. business. And, and, and they was, they was fighting it. They yeah. didn't, you know, they, they see their friends working for companies. They want to go work for another company. They don't want to work at the place. What we've had seven stores here in Dallas. And, and, and yeah. it's just like, Trying to convince my children has been the hardest part of it. Now, my younger kids, they grew up in it. But yeah. my older kids, they kind of was like you when you started. And they was like, okay, I see what he's doing, but I don't know if this is for me. Right. So how was it for you just embracing the uh, Yeah, Makita did you want to do it? No. There we go. <laughs> I, I should have figured that. You know what I mean? Oh, man, I'm such a hard worker. I wasn't, I wasn't looking into being in the family business. I, I work extremely hard. I've, man, I've had... I've had so many jobs. I, I can't even, man, from Walgreens to, um, man, um, what is it? One of those furniture places. I can't remember. I think it's Rent a Center, uh, Family Dollar. Man, I'd have been mm-hmm. somewhere everywhere. My, uh, the post office was the last stop. That's what I, you know, I was like, well, shoot. I've been wanting to be a part of the post office for a while. It's easy just put mail in the mailbox, you know. But before you um, moved around to all those different places, you had to work at a shop and I know did. the basics of how to run that shop. Yeah, yeah. As I much did. as you didn't want to be there, time you time. still had to be there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, Cause, you know, didn't like it. I, I ain't like it. As I say, as long as you live under our roof, you have to do what we say. Yeah, it was certain times they made me go. I yeah, had that's to what go, we do. You know? But yeah. at the end of the day, when you did get older, when did you learn to, did you re-embrace it? Because a lot of times, like, I ain't going to lie, I got to put him on the spot. My son, when he was 18, yeah. shout out to that boy over there. He told me, <laughs> uh, I'm going to the NFL. Oh. Uh, yeah, when I had a store in the country. I said, man, what are we going to do with the store? He said, Dad, I'm going to the NFL. Nigga, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so and, and we had to close the store down. But anyway, down there. So, yeah, at 18, he count, but now he, he embraces it again. So yeah. when did you get back to saying, okay, I still can run? And what caused it? you to do that? Yeah, it was probably um, maybe around maybe four or five years ago. Okay. Yeah, and what caused me is because I saw how hard my parents were working. And... You know, it comes a time when they need somebody to step up, you know. And I've had, you know, a two-year degree in Southwest and things like that. So I, I did the, you know, the marketing and management account. So I was actually already blessed to be in a leader role. I mean, I was always brought up to be a leader, never a yeah. follower. So, I mean, my parents, when I saw how hard they were working, and I knew it was probably it was almost about that time for them to just chill. They done done so much. And, you know, who better to step up? My brother, you know, he, he got the tools but I don't think he's just ready just yet you know it's gonna take some time so they look you know they look to me so I was like for sure you know and I just I quit the post office like that same day she told me that she really wanted me to come aboard I said all right bet say less you ain't gotta say nothing else and I just put my two weeks in told them I was gone started working for my family wow so the only place so how many locations y'all had two locations two. Yeah, we had two. We used to have three. Uh, we had one, um, like, in the east area, Sycamore View area. We had one that way, but um, we had to close that one down. wasn't getting a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, people, a lot of traffic. So we had the one downtown, 488 South 2nd, you know, and then we closed 488 South 2nd, and then we moved to Jefferson, which is where we are now. We moved yeah. back there, like, I think October of 2021. Yeah. You know, so... Um, that situation, now we just have one. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Okay, so you say now, when you say that situation, you're talking about Young Dolph. I see you wearing yeah. the Dolph t shirt. Oh, yeah. So you got yeah, that, yeah. You, 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 you got that one made? Uh, this one actually um, was, uh, it was a, some, a guy that was selling sweatshirts, you yeah. know, and I saw him, I just had to have one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so for our viewers and for, for the people who don't know, Makita Cookies is a place where Young Dolph uh, was killed. Yeah. Um, how that's how long that's been now? About three months, maybe. Roughly. 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 And so, months, so yeah. and 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 you know, we hey man, you know, we hated to see that happen. It, it shocked. Yeah. It sent shockwaves through, uh, just throughout people who love music, people who watch what's going on with hip hop. You know, yeah. I had went viral talking mm-hmm. about it before because when a long went, time ago, a long time ago before this even happened, yeah. because I was just telling you know young people, I was telling. I was shouting out actually Dolph and, and uh, 
Gotti about just going back and forth like they were doing because I was like, man, people hadn't, uh, you know, I was like, man, if you hadn't been locked up or somebody going to end up dead or I was, you know, b during that time, right. which I'm not saying that associates with this time, right. but I just was talking about just, just people trying in to general, come together. Yeah, trying to bring the people together. That's what right. I'm about. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. because the God in me says everybody can get past their differences. That's, that's the way I look at it. Right. But at any rate, um, when, um, uh, when this thing first happened and we seen a video, I know I did with somebody's arm hanging out the window. Was that fake or was that real? As, as far as I know, um, it was real. Okay. But yeah. before you say anything about that, were you there that day? I was not there that day. Okay. I was not. None was of that at day at all? Location. No, I was at the other location. I don't know because I seen you on the news. Yeah, yeah. How the hell I seen did. you on the news? A lot of people saw me on the news. I mean that that situation, like, like I mean, it have everything happened so fast. We got a phone call. My dad called, told us what was going on. And at first, we thought it was somebody in the store, like one of the employees. That's what we thought for me and my mom, because everything was just happening so fast. He was talking fast. We heard screams. So who was know. at the store that day? Who was working um, that day? It was um, one of my relatives, one of my cousins, and uh, two employees, two female employees. So your mom or dad was not even there at that they location that day? They were not there at the time, no. Okay. No, they weren't. So it just... Um, Headed over there is when and you have you cameras know, in that. Call. Oh yeah, it's cameras. So everything oh, so everything is caught on camera. Everything is caught. Everything from the time he walked in, everything is caught on camera, and the police have <laughs> that um, that footage in custody. They have everything. Okay. Yeah. So when when this happened, uh, I mean, you know, I know they got cameras in there and all that, but did they did they confiscate the cameras or did they just ask for copies? No, they confiscated everything in there. Everything in the office they took. Wow. And and so, you know, when when I when I first seen this, I, I'm not I'm going to be real with you. Um, when I started researching, because me and you talked, I was like, man, let me go back and look. There's a video where when I put your name in, uh, it pops up with you and you pretty much just showing homage to CMG. Um, I, that video popped up first. I'm not yeah. playing. It I believe like, you. I'm telling you. It's, so it'd probably be in search more or whatever. But at any rate, what was that? Was that uh, what? Cause we know they had differences. Was it what was the uh, connection with you and CMG? There is no connection with me and CMG. So you were just saying that just because you rock with their music, or I mean, when you're in Memphis, it, it's not a not a real okay. They got beef, so I'm gonna rock with this side. Okay, you know if you you like music, if music is music, then you gonna like whoever sing it. If that's what you feeling, that's what you feeling. You know, I can't you know, talk on the beef they had, you know, because that was, I'm not a part of that beef. I'm not, you know, hanging with one side and trying to be in beef with somebody on that opposite side. I don't do that. If I like your music, I just like your music. And at the time, that, that particular interview you were talking about, my sister was doing it. And we were interviewing uh, the new, uh, the twins that are assigned to CMG. That's what we, because he was probably a twin twin. Yeah, I heard you say that. That's the only thing. So I was like, oh, man, I fuck with CMG. I said, just, that's it. It wasn't, oh, man, I was just at Gotti House the other day, man. We was just talking about them. None of that popped out. But they took me having a discussion saying I'm, Rock with CMG and saying, okay, well, obviously she works for them or she about to get a deal with him. I'm like, shit, I ain't seen no deal. I don't know what y'all talking about. It was just, I've never, man, if Gotti were to walk into the store, it'll probably take me a second to realize who he is because I don't really just see him unless I see him on YouTube or something or I see him, you know, somebody posting him. So, so he never never visited a Makina? No, no, so I've never seen him. Just hypothetically speaking, if a deal did come up and it was very lucrative, would you still take it? No. No, absolutely not. I don't know. It's and not even because, you know, people will be looking at it like that. It's just I don't I mean, whatever kind of beef they claim and they have, I don't wanna be a part of that. I don't wanna be a part of anybody's beef or whatever you guys got going on, you hate one person so the whole crew gotta hate them type situation. I ain't with all that, you know. And on top of that, I mean, I wanna be I wanna be independent. I don't think anybody should be under anybody. I, don't I like think I like that should too. control anybody. I think you should be independent. You know, put your own stuff out. Don't let somebody control when you do this, that, and the third. You should be able to do that. So that's one thing I actually looked up to when it came to Dolph. I mean, yeah, he, you know, he was promoting generational wealth. He was supporting black-owned businesses. He was, 
I mean, he came back to his city. He didn't have to come back here. You know, he didn't have to come back to Memphis and show us love every time, every year. He didn't have to do that, but he did it, you know? So, so when, when when I think about it, though, how because you hear all these all these uh, conspiracy uh, yeah. people talk about this or that, things that they say, how, because, you know, I, I look at things and I'm like, man, you know, I, for him to be driving around in those areas, I know you guys probably were used to that. But from the yeah. outside looking in, you you like, man, dang, like it's it, it's like certain things. Like I had a homeboy that pulled up here the other day in his Lambo truck. Um, he grew up here. It's not something that he do all the time. We was yeah. doing the show. Um, and um, but at the end of the day, that's like he was like a sore thumb sticking out. You know, people that came by, I see him walk by several times because of the yeah. vehicle that's parked there because of how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. So was it something that that Dolph just done? Did he when he would drive, he'd bring up drive any kind of car up or whatever? Yeah, he was comfortable. I mean, that's your city. I mean, I don't know how it is in other cities and states, but in Memphis, man, love is love with us. Like, that's how he felt. You know, I'm in my hood. You know, I'm comfortable here. I don't want to be, you know, known as that multimillionaire artist. You know, when I come home, I'm home, and people see me as Adolf, you know, or they see me as Dolph, but they don't, they're not starstruck and so hung up on it. You know, I can come home. Yeah, but in straight. every city, but in every city, no matter how um, you feel that way, you're still going to have your haters there who wish they could be you because they're looking at your life and be like, man, I grew up with you. I went to school with you. Mm -hmm. I rap too. I, you sh I should be you right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hate. Or yeah. I, or I or I work for a city job and you making all this money. I mean, you you used to be in the same class together. And you, hell, you was you quit or yeah. anything. You know, what I'm just saying because yeah. I we all experience that when you right. start to level up. You know what I mean? We see that. I seen it. Yeah. You know, um, there's certain things I can't say outside of this. Like when Nipsey got killed, you know, in front of his store. I've been yeah. there several times. I used to frequent there, um, but I knew that what I say outside of this door driving the cars I drive, being the yeah. person I am, there are certain ways I have to carry myself because right. what I say amplifies to the person, whoever it is that's in these parking lots. You right. know what I mean? So you right. just got to be very careful when you start to level up in, in, in the neighborhood that you're from. Yeah, you know? we speak yeah. about that all the time. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't think, you know, even though that, and that, that could be true, but I just don't think he felt that way. I just, I mean, because, you know, hey, I know what I know who I'm beefing with. You know, obviously he know who he beeping, uh, beefing with and everything. He knows this. But I don't think, you know, I think Dolph just had that kind of heart and that, that type of energy that he just didn't feel like that. He just did not feel like, hey, I got to have, you know, six, seven goons with me just in case. Or, man, I'm not going to get out the house at all when I come home. I'm just going to send somebody to get something. You know what I'm saying? Like they said, he should have did. Yeah, like, I hear that a lot. That's know? something I hear a lot. But that's what they have to understand. Dolph, was been, Dolph had been coming to that store for 12 years. No but, one stop. So you tell know? me something because we have a retail store, as you know. Yeah. And um, customers come in and out, and we know them. Right. But how much did you really know him? Because you know they come in, may chop it up a little bit, and then leave. Mm -hmm. Come back the same thing. But how well did you really know him? That's that's how we knew him. He just came in repeatedly, and after a while, you just develop that type of relationship. Where, you know, in Memphis, you know, you walk in the door more than once in our store, you consider family. Mm -hmm. We're going to know you by name. And right. after a while, when we say, hey, you know, what's up, Dolph? After a while, he's going to want to know our name, you know, because we constantly saying the same thing. He's constantly seeing our face. You know, we're seeing his face. And it just went on from there. So when he started coming in, it was a regular greet. What's up, Raven? What's up, Mama? You know, what's up, Pops? Let me get that, you know, that. That's how the conversation was. So true enough, no, we weren't going to Thanksgiving dinners or, you know, hey, I got some free uh, tickets. Y'all come sit in the back with me type vibe. No, it, it was none of that. But when you look at the type of relationship we had when it came to a biz, my mom said she felt close to him because he was an entrepreneur. She's an entrepreneur. That's kind of how they link, you know. Then not to mention their birthday is the same. She, she just felt that connection. And that by itself meant a lot to her. Because she doesn't listen to his music, obviously. I mean, she's 64 years old. But it's just the fact that, hey, you know, I see this man, this black man, he has all this money. You know, he has everything he could ever ask for. And yet he still finds time to come back home and walk into this shop and buy cookies. And, you know, like it's, all right, I see y'all, you know, when I come back type situation. I mean, that, that's what meant a lot to us. You know? Do you feel that it was something that was um, set up? Do you feel that way? I, I don't, 
But um, I mean, who am or did I you to, feel like it was just random? Like, I feel like it was just some some hatred and some jealousy. And like I said, everybody knew he was back. Everybody knew he was home. He made it clear. You know, that's the week he comes back to, you know, pass out turkeys. He does it every year. But it was already known he was in the city. I just feel like, you know, it was just a lot of hatred for him. I feel like it was a lot of jealousy involved. You know, everybody want, like I say, people want to be you when you get higher up and you probably, you don't have nothing. You know? How long was he in the city before that day? What was told to me was like two days. He started out that week, that first, that beginning of that week. You know, that Monday, that Sunday or that Monday. And, you know, he went to the, the, the cancer center, showed them love. You know what I'm saying? I think that was the day before the incident. So he was already here in plenty. I mean, I think I think he had already passed out turkeys before that, yeah. you know. So, I mean, he was he was there for like a few, maybe a few days or so before, you know, everything, before his assassination like that, yeah. But when, when you look at social media, and I'm, that's how I got to go by a lot of times, because that's yeah. how people depict a lot of things mm -hmm. now. Which is I sad. Get, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. It's I get, bad and good. It's, I get the same yeah. I get the same pressure over here on Boss Talk. Understandable. So, um, but when I look at it, I see, you know, how does it make you feel when they say that, like, you and your boyfriend set up Dolph, and you hear all of this stuff. So how does that make you feel? At first, you know, it was at first when I first saw the first one, I was like, man, nobody gonna believe that. I mean, why? I mean, what reason would we have? What what are y'all coming up with? Then here come others, you know, back to back. I'm like, okay, I guess y'all do believe it, cause here it is spreading like crazy, you know. Then the situation with. Um, you know, my artist uh, being involved, you know, they yeah, did that I, I out of the blue, too. you know what I'm saying? Like, out of the blue, as soon as I mention my artist, now he's involved. You know, yeah. like, it's like when I mention somebody, now y'all want to add somebody, that person that I just mentioned. So when does the conspiracy stop? Like, so nobody ain't caught this yet. Like, every day is something different, and every day they add something. They can't stick to just one conspiracy, you know. Yeah. Now you got... All kind of stuff, Illuminati situation, you know. I'm pregnant with Young Dolph's baby, and that's the reason why I got rid of him, bro. What is that? I mean, you just hear all mm -hmm. this crazy, unnecessary stuff when, at the end of the day, just like everybody say in, in my hood, in, in Memphis, you know, Dolph, at that point, he just got caught slipping, and he was in a situation where he was just involved with some jealous people and some hating people, and that's how he got hit. It, it could have happened anywhere in the city, you know, because this is this wasn't their first attempt, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I just, I couldn't see it. I couldn't have, see why anybody caught, you know, wanted to accuse us out of everybody. Have you gotten any threats behind it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They started that night. You know, after everything was going, man, call after call, you know, people, you know, threatening to kill my family, my nephews. They, I mean, it's it's been a lot. But I don't think anybody's ever uh, showed up at the store, not that I know of. But, you know, calls, um, a lot of messages on our pages. Um, my parents' personal numbers were put all over the web. Um, that was a real headache, you know, because they got calls in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. you know, which led my father to actually, you know, get protection. You know, my dad, my dad hates guns. And, you know, the only thing he'll say is, is nothing good comes from a gun because, you know, the person in front of it is going to end up being a black man. And I don't want to be responsible for killing my people. I just don't. You know, so that hurt him to have to do that. But, you know, we got so many crazy people out here. You don't know who's just playing your with family. you or... You know, you don't know who's serious, you know. So yeah. it's it's just been it's been a little been a little rough, but you know, as time goes, I've I've gotten stronger. Uh, is it is it, I mean, what does God play a part in that? I mean, do you do do you do you put God first in, in what you do now more? Does it bring you closer to Him, or how do, how do you deal with it? It's pretty much it got to be hectic. Well, it's a lot of meditation. I can yeah. say that I do meditate. I'm a strong believer in in uh, the spiritual universe and things like. I, I'm a strong believer in the chakras, seven yeah. chakras being online. All of that energy, that positive energy that you have to instill in yourself to face another day, you know. But you know, my my family, we do believe in God. You know, we believe that He is the head of our life, and He's the only one responsible for us. And he's also the only one responsible for our reputation. Can't nobody break that, you know what I'm saying, if he's going to protect it. That's that's kind of how my mom looks at it. She's probably the strongest one. You know, shout out to my mom, Pamela Hill. I love you. Shout out, Pamela. Um, 
she's been the strongest one in all of this because everyone's been I've been wanting to just lose it mentally but just listening to her and saying you don't need to just li- just stop listening to them it doesn't matter what they say you know what is what does God say what is God telling you you know so you know hearing that and hearing how strong she's been throughout all of this is what it it makes me stronger it makes me want to fight harder so that's the reason why you know, all this fight is in me and people see me all the time. You see me all the time because you won't stop talking about me. I'm yeah. not going to just let you keep talking and I'm not going to address it or I'm not going to speak up for myself or my family. I mean, this is my legacy that you're trying to destroy. So I can't allow anybody to do that. Let me let me ask you something. Like, uh, what what happens? What happens, like, to the, like, like the store, you know, because we're in a strip mall and, mm-hmm. and it looked like a strip mall that you guys in, like a, a strip. But yeah. what happens to like, I know you guys had leases on the building, yeah. all type of stuff going on. Yeah. So are you got, it got to have insurance, some kind of way tied to it. How do, how, how does that affect in your, you know, far as the business? I know it's closed now, but you guys are taking a hell of a loss on that. Right. From, 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 from the outside looking in, being right. a business owner. Because you're still paying rent, right? We are still paying rent, right. lights. Everything's yeah. still on and uh, active in that building right now. And um, to answer your question about the insurance, um, they called that insurance first. That's the first thing we called, you know, to try to see what mm-hmm. what steps we got to take because of what just happened. And unfortunately, um, the insurance state stated that they don't cover I believe. Uh, high profile murder cases like mm. this. I believe you know? it. I know. I believe so, that because they always yeah. looking for loopholes. I already yeah. know that I deal with them on business. Yeah. You're going to deal with the insurance companies. Most people are. are that's the thing that I, I need to do a whole segment on because most of the time commercial uh uh, just businesses and stuff yeah. when it come down to insurance they look for the loophole so you have to be uh, keen on your business in order to even be able to keep up with you know how I am mm-hmm. and you know how to get over on me we pay right. y'all so much I remember one right. time I was paying like twelve of thirteen hundred dollars a month on just insurance and mm. then when something happened they didn't want to cover it that's the that's the way i don't know why society is like that but insurance right. companies are the worst when it comes down to that right. so i could easily see them doing that in the yeah. midst of that and then when you're not really used to dealing with them and they do that it just crushes you already yeah. it's like kicking somebody when they down you yeah, know right. so so um that that's crazy Okay, so what I want to know, I know that you weren't there that day, but your employees were. Right. So from an account from your employees' standpoint, can you walk us through exactly what happened from the moment he walked in till the end? Well, what was told to me is that he walked in. Um, he asked for um, two lemon and two strawberry cookies, like okay. precise. That's what was told. And for some reason, he stepped to the side for a second. Nobody knows why, you know, they say he was on the phone and um, and he was to the side by himself. He was to the side. Um, from what I'm hearing, his brother was with him. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Marcus Thornton. That was the person that was identified that was with him. OK, so um, he was in the store. His brother was in the store with him. And um, the employee that was ringing him up, um, she said she just looked down for a second. She looked up. She saw two guys running straight towards the store. And she just literally just had one of those, oh, my God, what the hell is about to go on? And she could see their guns in their hands? Yeah, she saw it. And she literally just, her eyes, she said her eyes got so wide, and she just froze for like a split second, and then she just ran. She didn't say anything. She didn't scream. She didn't say nothing? She couldn't. She said she was just so just gone by the fact that she just see two guys running up with guns. But you know you know people going to run with that. if they, Oh, she, they already did yeah, because that. because she didn't, yeah, she didn't <laughs> say she nothing. She set him up. Yeah, and yeah, just, uh, yeah they trying to say they looking for her. Oh, we're, gonna look at, we're looking for the person that rung him up because obviously she set him up. No, that's not what happened. I mean, this is a young girl. She's never experienced How anything like she? this. Uh, she's 23 years old. She's never seen anything like that before. I mean, she went to therapy. She's in therapy for this stuff. How long has know? she worked for y'all? Um... I want to say maybe three weeks before that incident. Mm. So not very like two long. Two three weeks. No, not, the, not That's why long. it could look a certain yeah. way. Yeah, but see, the only thing is, how would she be able to set him up? I mean. Because they could say things like, okay, you just said earlier that he comes yeah. back to town the same time, all the time. for Not you the know, same tur- time, though. For turkey and to do all of the things. Not at the same time, so he doesn't. No, come he don't come at that exact time, that exact day. Not the he same exact around the same time. Uh-uh. No, no, no. 
No, he does. She, no. He doesn't. She wouldn't. She she wouldn't have known that he was going to be there. Was that on a first? That, exact that, that was the first time meeting him. That was her first time seeing him walking. Seeing in him store. walking the store. That was okay. her very first time. She's never. She's mm-hmm. never really just seen him on a regular like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So she wouldn't have known anything about. He doesn't call the shop, ask, "Hey, I'm on my way." Mm-hmm. He doesn't do. He's never called. He just comes up like a regular customer. Only reason why he's just different like that is because hey, he's Dolph. And that another thing that um, I know that um, I saw on social media or on YouTube was the fact that they said that the other young man that was with him, how comes he didn't get shot too if he was right by him? Mm. That was his brother? Yeah. That was his brother. And, and that's he's a seen question. everything, huh? Yeah, yeah. Then that's a question I can't even answer for you. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that was God's will. I, we can't answer that. We can't answer why he didn't get hit and he was over there with that. We can't, you know, because they sprayed that store. I mean, everybody's trying to say it, it had the, the bullets are just right there where Dolph is. That's not true either. Were they y'all able to see the store. cameras, bef- see the video footage before the police took it? No, no, no. We didn't. We didn't have any opportunity to run anything back. As soon as the first uh, cop responded, that's the first thing they grabbed. Mm-hmm. They didn't grab anything else. They wanted, they wanted to get right on the case, you know, while it was still fresh. Maybe they can catch the people. Maybe, right. you know, like, did you guys, that's the first thing my dad said. We got cameras. They right here and they in the back, you know. They got him They got him recorded saying it. You know, he went live and said, well, we got cameras, you know. You know, whatever y'all need, we got it. And, you know, if it wasn't for the cameras, nobody would know who these people are anyway. Y'all see the freeze frame. So, y'all, obviously, y'all know that the cameras are in, you know, police custody. Y'all see a freeze frame of them. You see a freeze frame of the car. So how would they get that? Y'all know that that's where it came so from. So you, you know? said that, okay, so you had two employees, and you said your cousin that works there worked right. there that day? Yeah. So you said the employee rang him up. Where right. were the other two people? They were in the kitchen, in the back. In the back. Yeah. Okay. So um, after everything is all done and the person ran away, did they come back out? Yeah. And so... I- well, this is the the situation, what was told to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just go by what was told to me from right, the employees. Right, exactly. You know, as my cousin and the uh, second lady, was, uh, they were, you know, sealing up the cookies. You know, we got a little room. You seal up cookies, too. You know, you come out the kitchen, go in the room. All of it's connected, you know. So um, once they duck, you know, they, I mean, you hear gunshots. First thing you're going to do is either run or duck. You're going to do something to protect yourself. When they came up. You know, and realized that everything was done. They were gone. Then that's when they realized that Dolph didn't get up. Oh, so how long did how long did um it take your father to get over there? My dad literally was there, like right after it happened. Like when that car sped off, my dad was literally pulling his car, you know, bagging his car in this, you know, his parking spot because so he was after. coming to work. It he was coming to work. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, and so he he basically. Was coming to work, and and when you think about it, though, like I say, I just keep you. I'm, you you hear the stories of them trying to say that you guys, you know, pretty much was connected to right. to Dolph's murder. And right. So at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I, I hear what they're saying, but you know, the the thing you wasn't there, right? But but then, like I said, I seen you on the news. I don't know where how where you where did you do that interview at. Where you it was on the it was on the side it was on the side of the building. Was that the same day? That was the exact same day. So you came over there too, uh, that day. That I came there with my I was on my way with my mom because my mom wanted to go. She wanted to get over there and see what's going on. I mean, somebody obviously was just killed in a shop. You know, she was she was frantic. You know, she was trying to figure out what was going on. Was anybody else hurt? Because nobody wasn't really telling her anything. All we heard was that somebody was dead in a shop. We didn't know anything else. Until the second call when we were heading there, and then they told us it was Dolph, you know. Yeah. But uh, by the time we got there, you know, we couldn't. Of course, it's a crime scene, so we weren't there. We can't get over the tape. We can't talk to anybody about it. We just, my mom was just trying to get as close to something as possible because it was her shop. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that's that's tough, man. Like I said, I don't know if that that business come back, you know, for us mm-hmm. at that location. I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean that, it's, it's been there. How long it's been there? It's 22, 22 years. 22, 22 years. That got to yeah. come back. That's the that's like this one. It's but like would the, the community but would the community embrace it after that too? Well, I will say this, they're asking for it to be back. It's a lot of people that want that shop to be opened again. I mean, why wouldn't you guys? You guys are in the center of Castelia. This is I mean, 
why wouldn't you come back when that's something that people see? That's Airways is a busy street. So to ride down Airways and not see Makita's, you know, a lot of people was like, man, that'll, that'll actually hurt, you know, because it's been around for so long. So why get rid of it now? I mean, a lot of people really want So are you, you know, planning my to reopen back. it? It's up to my dad. Yeah, Raven, I, like I said, I don't, I, I hate the way that they're doing you guys online because, like I said, on there, you can almost paint a picture of you guys being totally connected to you know what i mean yeah the negative yeah. side if you want to look at it the other way you can but yeah. that picture is drawn now and you know it don't just come down you know what yeah. i mean yeah. and then you guys how, how how do you guys move differently now that this has happened we don't move differently we do everything exactly the same we have not changed we get up we go to work we bake cookies um we have cookies in the stores down there in memphis all the grocery stores um they're still kicking you know, I mean, we had a contract that we were actually about to sign before all of this even happened that we literally had to put on hold because all of this happened, you know. So um, you can't we, say you don't move differently because I guarantee you you're more observative of your surroundings. We're more we're observant, but we were always observant. I was always observing my surroundings even before this. I mean, I mean, you that's everywhere. You gotta so is it be just observant. like that down in Memphis? Like no, you, yeah, I mean, that's like that fit. everywhere. Yeah. You can't just necessarily say, I mean, yeah, I know y'all see Memphis and we're like, damn. Yeah, I've been again? down there. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all keep saying, oh, man, again? Oh, man. But if you think about it, that's, I mean, that's just life, man. I mean, that's just... That's just the way it is. I I'm not, I can't say how it is in Texas. I can't say it's how it is It's different when you there. grow up in a certain area yeah. and you're used to it. That's the same thing some people say about Jamaica. They say in certain areas we hear how y'all do it. You know, people be shooting, killing. Yeah, I've heard all. a lot. Right, but it's not everywhere. But then okay. when you're born and raised there, you don't think about it as anything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think about it as, I mean, it's extremely serious. I mean, what's going on in Memphis right now is, it's extremely serious mm -hmm. and it's hard to watch, you know, because that is my city. And, you know, I weep for my city, you know, about, all the time. What about like um, Dolph's family or anybody since he it did happen there? Have you guys reached out to his family or anything? As of right now, you know, we, we've talked to a spokesperson for them and we have had relatives come to the shop, you know, show us love, support us, you know, say we're here for you guys and all that. But as far as like his wife, Mia, his wife and, his kids. and his uh, kids and his his parents, we haven't had an opportunity to talk to them yet. But we definitely want to reach out. But I mean, what can you say? That's well, like just, the hardest I, thing to with, talk about. You with, know, I get it. With the internet moving as fast as it is on right. information, I just you know I don't know how. I, and I'm not in your shoes, but if I was, I don't know. You know, because you don't want the wrong narrative out there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people are saying this and saying that. And, and being that you guys, uh, if if you didn't have anything to do with it, you would think the proper thing would be to reach out to them and, you know, just tell them, hey, man, we love you if it's anything. And, and you we, know have, what I mean? we have, like I said, we've talked to relatives. I mean, obviously, I know they relayed the message. I mean, I've talked to some of PRE artists, you know. That, you know, I've reached out to them, you know, just letting them know, you know, our condolences, man. We just want to show y'all love. We here, you know, we so sorry that all this stuff had to go down. We've reached out to people that are connected to Dolph. Did Key Glock or any of those guys from PRE ever come over to uh, Makita's Cookie? I've, I've never really, I've never seen Key Glock come in. I can't tell you whether or not he probably was, you know, came in a time or two with Dolph when I went there. Like I said, he's came plenty of times when times I wasn't even there. I can't really answer that. Um, but, you know, the fact that, you know, the thing with Key Glock, you know, the fact that he did that video in front of that store, that speaks volumes to me. Yeah. I, I just can't see anybody that feel like we had something to do with it doing a whole video out in front of that shop. I can't see it. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but, of course, you know, you got your naysayers. Oh, that don't mean anything. Well, it means a lot to us because my, my dad was proud to see that, you know. Yeah. And... I mean, how, every, how everybody else is taking it, it's pretty much just social media. I don't I don't think PRE Camp and I don't think Miss um, Mia, his wife, I don't think his parents even had a thought in their mind ever crossed that we were a part of this. You know, otherwise we would have heard about that some kind of way. Something would have been said. And like I say, the streets of Memphis talk all the time. So, I mean, if we were... If anybody felt like in Memphis, like that powerful, that we had something to do with it, I don't think I'd be sitting here talking to you right now. Yeah. I don't think we, I mean, I think we'll be in some serious trouble physically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't see us being able to open every day. I just don't see that. But, you know, you just got people on the outskirts, like in Texas, you know, you got 
little bloggers. And then, you know, you got St. Louis bloggers. You got these folks that's come, you know, just, you know, putting all these lies out here. And you got your, you, I call them cult followers. I, I just feel like, you know, most of these bloggers are like the Jim Jones or YouTube. Everybody just following y'all and don't even know what they following. And they're just giving y'all money and don't, they don't care what you say. It could be real or fake. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that you just entertain it. Is yeah. that you just going and going, but it's it's at a, it's causing my family pain and it's making wow. uh, us look bad. So you know, at this point, it's pretty much do what you got to do. So let me ask you. you a, I want to ask about uh, the. Uh, it was some. I heard it somewhere that your parents like they they eat o they ate over at privy. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. at at that restaurant. Is is that true or, or before all of this happened? Was they yeah, frequent in that restaurant? No, that, that one time and it was for a birthday party. I mean, what type of connection is that? I don't I don't see it. So everybody eats there. So what does that mean? I mean, people have ate there before, had birthday parties there before. What would that have to do with anything? I I don't understand. Why they would even be brought up? That has nothing to do with Dolph's murder. You know, everybody's yeah. trying to put put that connection some kind mm -hmm. of way to CMG, but there is no connection. We have never been in the company of them like that. We don't. We not no close connect. It's none of that is going on. We don't know these people besides how the the world knows them. Yeah, period. yeah. Well, you know, like I said, um, the the do, when you. When you look at uh, just growth, do you think you guys are, are you guys going to try to open up other oh, stores? I, uh, I knew you would get it back. <laughs> other other locations like oh, around yeah. Memphis, are y'all still trying to press to build that business up throughout? Well, the business, I'm I'm going to tell, you, I'm gonna be honest with you, the business really hasn't suffered like people so think. Did, did it skyrocket when I this mean, happened, it or did, it, it, it did scaled? Some, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna tell you, and people gonna look at people been looking at this as bad. My dad said it, but people been looking at this as so terrible for him to say. But he he said that um, he had a, a conversation with Dolph. It was like a personal conversation. He came in the store, and my dad was by himself that day, and, he, and Dolph told him, he said, man, I'm going to do something for y'all, man. I'm going to put y'all on the map. I'm going to make y'all famous. That was two years before, you know, his assassination. I mean, so, you know, my dad was like, well, shit, I thought he was talking about a, a, a music video or something. He was going to show Makita's, you know. Yeah. I didn't think that even like now and that's how we got to look at like right now this man is showing us so much love but it's just in it, we just hate the way it had to happen yeah. but you do see that everybody is supporting us like people don't it's a lot of people that don't even know us that feel like in the bottom of their heart like out there like it's no way we could have done that it's no way we could have set that man or hurt that man that man was supporting us so i guess they feel like you know Dolph, you know, thought you guys were good enough, you know, to support why, you know, hey, we need to do the same thing. And that's what people have been doing. People have just been reaching out. So the stuff that people are saying on the blogs, they may think that, I guess they think everybody's supposed to be with them. Like millions of people supposed to unite, you know, but no, nah, that's not what's popping. You know, people people got their own mind and they thinking for themselves. And, and in their minds, they're thinking, no, absolutely not. Why would they do something this cruel? You know, yeah. Well, so. I, I, like I said, it, it, go ahead. I, I know you got that question. No, um, when they had arrested um, person of interest at first, mm -hmm. did that even ease any of the tension that was coming y'all's way? No. So did no. it get worse? Oh yeah. So they still wanted to make and oh, and, yeah. and and like I said, most of the stuff that I was seeing it was just it was you and your boyfriend or you and your artist. So you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just did that because you type would of think pressure. that that would took off some of the pressure because then you know off. they found somebody else and like okay, well he did it, not y'all. Yeah, but it, they had to find some kind of connection to that. Have you the, know? Did the did did the police uh, or did in investigators question you? No. No, they they pretty much didn't question you or nobody in all. your guys family or no only, the only ones they questioned were the ones that, that was there that they had, had to make a statement that was it we haven't had to do any questioning because there's nothing to question because they have the footage what's the point when we have everything right here in our face and we know it's no way that you guys could have done this what if you could go back and 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 is there anything in this whole process that you feel like you would have yeah, done differently. Would have done differently. Only thing that I said, and I said that on um, on uh, Skull's channel, just say no to Skull. Shout out to Skull. Shout out to Skull, um, man. That's much my love. love to Skull. 
Uh, I said that on his channel. The only thing that I felt like I should have done different was I shouldn't have talked to the press when I did in the beginning. That was it. That video I that keep bringing it. up. Right? Yeah, and like I said, I'm I'm kind of like the spokesperson person for my family. So when my mom, because my mom was sitting on the side of me, she didn't want to talk. It was people just constantly coming up, can get, get a statement, get a statement. And then you got folks coming and saying, yeah, y'all got to say something, man. This just happened in y'all shop. Y'all got to say something. And what people don't know, which I actually did stay on scope, man, that interview was probably about 10, 15 minutes long. Y'all only saw two minutes. They chopped that interview up some serious. It was to the point when everybody started talking about it. I was like, well, damn, what did I say? I had to go back and listen to it mm -hmm. because I'm trying to figure out how y'all come to this conclusion that we did it. What did I say? And when I went back, I'm like, hold up. I I never told this lady that my dad was kneeling by Dolph and tried to re revive him. I never said that. Like, hold on, where you get that? Like, I'm just trying to figure out where they got that stuff from. So, you know, that right there, that's the only thing I feel bad about. Like, okay, well, I probably shouldn't. I, yeah, and I apologized about that. I even apologized to the naysayers. I said, y'all, I'm sorry that y'all felt like I overstepped, and I feel like that too. I apologize to y'all, but... My family had nothing to do with this. You think they wanted to hear that? They ain't trying to hear that. Did your Did your parents feel like it, it was like, man, you shouldn't have said that? Or they didn't no, say, they didn't no, say they didn't say that. Um, they did. They watched it just like I watched it. And they was like, well, why did they say you said that? I said, I don't even know. They, the same. My dad said the same thing I said. Why would they say that? Because I didn't tell them that, you know. So it it came. I I just gotta watch media all the way around look like because I didn't know the news live for ratings too. I'm like, damn, okay. <laughs> I'm looking at y'all want to boost y'all ratings up because y'all were the first ones that got the interview. So oh, we gotta hurry up, put that in, just block that out, block that out, take that wow. out. That looked like what y'all did, and I'm like, whoa, y'all just kind of opened up. I know I helped y'all, but y'all really just opened up something that we probably won't be able to close yeah. you know mm -hmm. and here we are now can't close it. yeah yeah, yeah. it's going to take some time though it's going to take some time it's yeah. just only three months might take a year it's going to take some time and a yeah. lot of lawsuits because i'm planning on taking a lot of so blogs that, that's your that's your next step oh yeah yeah it's, are you going to do a cardi b I, I don't even want money i don't want any money shout out to cardi b though for <laughs> opening that door because I feel like now that she's opened that door, it's going to open the door to a lot of people that are going to comfort, really feel that comfort these too. people, you know? So when she did that, it helped. I was already talking about taking the paper before Cardi B even came out, and, and she did. I didn't even know that was going on. But I, I was talking about taking pages, like, like maybe two weeks before, you know, mm -hmm. two weeks when it started happening. I'm like, oh, I'm definitely coming for y'all because y'all just lying. And I can't have y'all lying on my family, especially my parents. I was straight with me. I probably just sucked this up. Okay, they got me on the camera. I messed up. Okay, I just suck it up, right? Just suck it up. But when you come for two hardworking people, 22 years in the game, build something from nothing, and you trying to step on their name and cause all this chaos and all these consp conspiracies with my parents, I don't do that. I, I can't let you get away with that. So it's like I got to fight for them no matter what, and that's where we are. That's why they going so they going harder now because they know – I got what it takes, and I got that power to do it. I'm never going to come on your show. Why would I do that? You and your panel already are saying that I'm guilty. Why would I? That's like being in front of a firing squad, try to tell them, hold on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm just going to strike your page, which I've done a few times. A couple of folks are in trouble now with, with YouTube. Now that I've gotten your attention, since you don't want to stop, you feel like, okay, I'm just going to keep poking the bear. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a bull. I'm a Taurus. So when you when I hey when you come for me I see that red that red little flag that you throwing up oh I'm finna charge and that's exactly what's finna happen I'm just I gotta take I gotta get rid of y'all cause yeah. I don't want y'all doing this to nobody else I so don't have feel you like started it's fair. those lawsuits oh yeah yes ma'am I got every single death threat that I've gotten I've gotten recordings of people threatening me I've gotten um, because of the lawsuits uh, no not because of the lawsuits I'm talking about because of the the, the young Dolph uh, young assassination Dolph, okay. I've got I got everything. I recorded everything, and so I just suing some of those lawyer. people too. Oh yeah, it's over with. So How they, many cases do you have? I, at this point now, I'm. It's probably like maybe seven or eight. Yeah. You know, I haven't even looked at all the other bloggers. You know, I just know it's uh like seven or eight main ones that I know talk about me every single day. You spend four or five hours talking about me and my parents, and I just it's just the sickest thing I've ever seen. Then you got people cheering you on. 
you know, why they're doing it. I've been called a bitch, a hoe. You've been calling me all this crap, and you got black women. Just, yeah, man, get that bitch. Hold on, bro, wait a minute. So, y'all, okay, so this is what we're doing? So, you, y'all okay with a black man calling a black woman a bitch? Don't know me, never met me, but that's what I am. I'm, I'm one of them. Y'all know how y'all feel about that word when somebody call y'all that, you know, out of anger or out of hate. So why y'all think it's okay for them to do it? Because you believe everything they say? Like, come on, man. That's, I I never really just uh, felt like this bad for my people before. Like, I guess because I'm under the bus now, mm-hmm. you know. And the fact that I see, like, so many people, same color as me, and all you doing is... You, you ride along with everybody else cheering on. I hope y'all business fail, you know. But my mom I always say this. She say, you know, so many we got so many people that hate us that's against us, but you know, they can't they can't fight God. It's impossible. You know, so why they keep 100%. throwing all this hate toward us? Guess what God doing? Protecting and blessing, protecting and blessing. She mm-hmm. said every day. Wow. He just protecting and blessing. You see what's going on, right? You see we trying to get these cookies out and all over the place. People want a franchise with us. It's just protecting and bre- uh, blessing. That's all we get. Wow. So just let them talk. You know, she was telling me, let them talk. That's what in the beginning. But then when she started seeing her name come up, <laughs> <laughs> now. she was like, so uh, what, what I need to do, right? And what we going to, uh, you talking to the lawyers? You know, she read it from now. She read it. She said, yeah, go ahead and get rid of that. Yeah, we got to go and get that down. You know, because, you know, you, come on, man. Right. Attack in me, but not like my this, family. In you know? a case like this, did you have to go find those lawyers, or did those lawyers reach out to you? We already had a lawyer. Okay, because you know how in some high-profile stuff, you know, they might reach out to him like, mm-hmm. well, if you need some help, yeah, here I am. Yeah, we had a family. We already have a family lawyer that take care of everything, corporate matters, anything dealing with the business, anything. She takes care of it. She's already on it. And when we just ready for the process to begin. Where is that uh, store at that's still open, the the, the, the shop that's still open? Uh, it's 301 uh, Jefferson Avenue. It's downtown. It's the downtown. downtown location of Memphis. Yeah. Wow. And that one been there how long? Uh, we just opened that one actually oh, really? in October. Man, that's October. A, that's a um, we closed the 488 South Second one that was downtown. And we was there for five years. Then we moved from there because we needed a bigger location. We about to... I mean, when I tell y'all, before, you know, the assassination of Dolph, everything was good. We were getting contracts. Everything was flowing. You know, we had more people wanting to buy our cookies to sell in the stores. We had to have a bigger uh, bigger space. So we moved from that location to a bigger location. And that one's been open uh, ever since October. And we did a grand opening November the 6th. Okay. Well, I tell you, man, like I said, we appreciate you for coming on the show, man. For sure. uh, I think, um, you know, like I said, the only thing I can say is just keep God first, man. Like, mm-hmm. like uh, that's the most important thing for, for me, from me to you, you know, and, yeah. and um, you know, pray and meditate like you was talking about earlier, man. Right. You, you um, like I said, you, you, we appreciate you for coming up, man. And, and I, I, yeah, I don't know, you know, it. like I said, the, the trouble don't last always. Oh, for sure. And, and, and at the end of the day, uh, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So you you all you got to do is just keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand, and yeah. like I said, I'm gonna keep your family in prayer, you yeah, know, because you guys that. are you guys are uh, you guys are business owners like me, entrepreneurs, right. And, right. and and it's not easy to even stand alone out here. And, and like I say, we've been here 15 years, right. but it, it hadn't been easy. We've closed right. some, opened some, moved some, did everything yeah. to stay in business. So yeah. I definitely understand what it come when it comes down to your business going through something like that. This store right. flooded one time. Um, we lost all kind of stuff. Uh, I can name story after story. So I right. definitely understand, you know, uh, having to go through tests and trials. Right. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for coming on the show. Do you got everything you need? Yes, sir. Well, yeah. let me, let me shout, let me shout well, out. Go let shout, me shout out, out my parents. Here. She want to shout it out. I got to show my parents a little, my recent Pamela Hill, the Makita's homie, but because man, the strongest people I've ever met in my entire life. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for just believing in me, wanting me to take over and show love. I'm I'm excited and I can't wait, you know, for when it's time for y'all to pass that torch to me. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to our, our management, uh, TMF, Now I Don't Want Trick or Trade, my artist, my informed uh, freckles, man. Shout out to you guys. Y'all doing it big by Just Say No to Skull. 
you know, I'm man, I'm I'm blessed, man. Boss talk, man. One on one, one man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all, you man. gonna hype me up? We then. blessed, man. We blessed. That did it right there. <laughs> All you had to do was say boss talk one on one. Man, we blessed Everything out changed. here. We blessed out <laughs> here, man. It's man love, and I just appreciate you guys. And man, as far as the bloggers, y'all know what's up. I'm man, just you. keep your head up, man, and you know you always got a place here at Boss Talk One Old Man. What a boss's talk, right? Boss Talk One yeah. Old is going down. So I one thing I can it. say, man, just keep on keeping your head up. Like I said, don't sure. give up on your business. For Everybody, sure. other people need to see our black constituencies, you know, pushing the business because we don't have a lot. Thanks. Even though it looked like everybody black, like, we don't have a lot, man. Yeah, so thank sure. you so much for coming I on the show. It. It's thank been you. another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.